We're back. Greg from RVH Lifestyles, and this is the Brainiac. Mr. Know-it-all, everything about Volvo trucks. I like my Volvos. Wow. We're going to talk to you about the wonderful world of front axles, rear axles, brakes, and wheels. And Jonathan's going to be talking about things. Um, a lot of what we're going to talk about is carrying capacity in this video, but also weight reduction, which increases fuel economy, rolling resistance, Stopping power. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brakes was part of this. Brakes is, yeah. It's okay. Go, go, gadget, Jonathan. Well, I'd like to start with saying that these axles are designed to haul 80, 100, 110, 140,000 pound loads. And we're not hauling anywhere near that. So, what fits for a commercial trucker doesn't necessarily fit for an RV. And that's where we've kind of had to pick different options. So one that stays the same is the front axle. We have several options, but for our environment, either a 12,500 pound front axle or a 13,200 pound front axle, which we call the steer axle, that's enough capacity for what we're doing. But but our favorite is the 13,200 13.2 pound. is the preferred axle. It gives us the best carrying capacity mm -hmm. um, to weight ratio. And that's usually where we try to aim when we're designing an RV hauler. Now, just a little snippet of information here. What we're talking about is that weight oh, right here, front axle. And you would think, man, it's pretty hard to overload this. But the reality is, remember, on some of our RV hauler rigs, we're putting tools back here, a drawn box on the back of the Volvo, we're putting toolboxes along the frame, smart car, ATVs, golf carts. Believe it or not, there are some scenarios in which we start to approach the front axle weights. I've got another video that you can watch on that if you'd like to search my YouTube channel or maybe I'll put a little link up here on the screen. But the 13.2, if you're specking a new truck with Jonathan, get the 13.2 because it ensures we never overload that front axle. Well, this truck just sitting here is usually 10,500 pounds on that front axle, where the way it shows up from the factory. So, you know, that couple thousand pounds doesn't leave you a lot of room, but for us, that's enough. Okay. So next we're gonna go on to brakes before we go on to the rear axle. And the reason for that is the commercial trucking industry is a little behind the rest of the world when it comes to brakes. We still use drum brakes for a lot of applications. Drum brakes work. They're designed to stop heavy loads. They're cheap to fix. They're cheap to maintain. And it's what most commercial trucks on the market have. However, there are some drawbacks. One of them is a slack adjuster. So this is something that adjusts for the brakes. So they're always tight and they're always pushing properly. They go out of alignment. There's something that has to be maintained, you have to watch, and you're supposed to actually pull over at the brake check stations to make sure these are in alignment. What, what about auto slack adjusters though? They are auto, but they don't always work, and that's oh, where okay. a lot of people in the commercial truck industry will actually get tickets for not maintaining them properly. So what we've come to recognize is disc brakes are the way to go. There's no slack adjusters, there's a lot less parts to go wrong. Um, as well, they give a vast improvement, 35% better stopping distance, so you're going to stop a lot quicker. As well, they last usually on average twice as long, so maintenance costs are half. Mm -hmm. As well, most importantly, they don't get the brake fade going down a hill, and that's why most of the pickup trucks you've seen out there have moved over to disc brakes, while the trucking industry is starting to move to disc brakes. So if you're going down a long 20 kilometer hill, you want to know that those brakes are not overheated, warped, and losing their braking efficiency by the time you get to the bottom of the hill. How many miles is that? 12? You said, okay. I'm Canadian. 12 miles, okay. 20 kilometers. You gotta talk American. I gotta talk American. <laughs> Um, so we, we strongly recommend the disc brake option on front and rear axles. And there are some companies that will let you just do disc on the front or just do disc on the back. But the way um, a truck is designed, it uses air to operate the brakes. They will apply at a different speed. And you don't want your back or your front gripping before the other set of brakes. So you either want to do disc brakes across the entire truck or drum brakes across the entire truck. Now, from our, from, you know, I've, I've been helping my customers design these new trucks for a number of years now. And what I'm really happy to talk about here in the spring of 2017 is the price on yes. the disc brakes has gone down. Every year it keeps going down, down, and down. And mm -hmm. now we're to the point where... What did we calculate at this time? A three thousand dollar option. It's very reasonable price. It's in my note somewhere. That's okay. So if we move on to rear axles, um, what we want to order is a single rear axle for these trucks. Uh, again, we'll go back to our demo here. This is the way most commercial trucks will appear. These are each twenty thousand pound axles. That's what or they're rated. Or twenty three in heavy haul circumstances. 
you don't need 40 or 46,000 pounds worth of carrying capacity. Your average tongue weight is five to 8,000 pounds. You're not gonna be anywhere near that even with the weight of the smart car. So what we do is we order a single axle truck with only one drive axle. We make sure it's a locking axle so the power from left to right can be locked so you don't just spin one tire. And we try to order a 23,000 pound capacity axle mm -hmm. with tires to match. So that way you get that optimal carrying capacity. Um, as well, we try to go for disc brakes in the rear. Now. One important thing though when it comes to the rear axle is not actually the axle itself, it's the gearing that goes inside. And when we had an earlier conversation about what engine to choose, it's equally important deciding on what gear ratio to choose. And that's where we need to know the speed you want to travel at. For somebody driving 60 miles an hour, I will put a different ratio in than somebody driving 75 miles an hour. Because we want to gear this to get the best fuel economy mm -hmm. possible for your driver. So. One thing a sales professional like myself would need to know from you before you come in is where you plan on traveling, if you're going through a lot of mountains or if you're traveling the flat areas, and what speed you want to cruise at because that will change the gear ratio we put in the truck. And other than that, I think that pretty much covers axles. Um, we did want to talk briefly about tires and rims. Yep. Um, we have a few different options when it comes to tires and rims. Typically, we found an Alcoa Ultra One wheel, polished aluminum wheel, is the best way to go. You can save money on steel wheels, but unfortunately, they get rusty, they weigh a lot, they wear out your fuel economy. The Alcoa aluminum polished wheel is the best way to go. And that's a... Let's talk about a, a minutiae point for a second. Okay. The weight of those wheels and of how yes. even reducing a 23 pound per... Mm -hmm per rim, yep. how, what it saves you? Unfortunately, people think of saving weight differently. And when you're saving weight on the back of a truck, that's one thing. But when you're saving turning mass, whether it's on a drive line, on wheels, on tires, it has a big effect on performance, how fast the vehicle gets up to speed, the performance, how peppy it is when you put on the accelerator, mm -hmm. and the fuel economy you get. That turning mass can make a massive difference on the performance of a truck. Just talk to Jonathan. And we like certain wheels. It, Over the course of time, we've figured out certain tires make a difference as well. It, it's kind of cool. If, if you look at this, remember this big list that I showed you? There's not only, it, it actually has weights on all of these yeah. things. So there's negative weights on some of these that if you... That's if, a conversation a when mud, we're ordering it. If you ordered this mud flap hanger, it would save you one pound. Yeah. We, we can have that flap. conversation when we're ordering okay. a truck on what weight we can save, where it's appropriate to add weight, and where it's appropriate to subtract weight with lightweight aluminum pieces or different parts that can help you gain a little extra fuel economy. Because if you can save 500 pounds on the weight of a truck, that does make a fuel economy difference. Okay, I distracted you from wheels. Wheels, rubber, tires. We have a lot of different options at our disposal. It's not like, again, purchasing a Ford, Chevy, or Dodge. We have pages of tires we can put on this truck. So. Let us know where you want to run. Let us know how you want to use the truck. We can select a more aggressive, a less aggressive. If you're a pavement queen and you're never going to leave that asphalt, let's get you a high efficiency, low rolling resistance tire that'll give you 400,000 miles of use without having to replace them. Or if you want to go into some of those backcountry areas, let's get you a little more aggressive tire. Or if you're running through the mountains and you need snow and ice, again, let's get you the right tire for the right job. Okay, I'm trying to stay on topic, but I'm going to, I have to tell people about We've had conversations about whether you're driving on asphalt or cement affects which tires to choose. It makes a difference. Yep. Okay. Remember... This guy, this guy does make me look really good. In the trucking industry, when you're dealing with a commercial truck driver putting on 150, 200,000 miles a year, if you can even save 1% or 2% in fuel economy, that's thousands of dollars in fuel. So we've got this down to a fine art in getting you the best fuel economy and the best performance for what you're doing. Now, that's per year, but hey, over the life of an RV hauler, we're, we're building an RV hauler, specking an RV hauler for, come on, 10 years. We want this thing, the reason we're drawn to the Volvos is because of the longevity. That's why we're drawn to heavy-duty trucks, right? A Volvo is going to outlast two or three pickup trucks towing. Well, some of our trailers can't even be towed by a an LGT. Or well, the, how many pickup trucks, the life expectancy, 200,000 kilometers or 120,000 miles, that's that's when a lot of people are flipping these trucks. You, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. Do you know what an LGT stands for? No. We got your HDT, which is heavy duty truck. Yeah. Then you got the little brother, which is the medium duty truck. Yeah. And then you got your LGT. Little girly truck. Oh, are you calling my <laughs> F-350 a little girly truck? Okay. <laughs> 
Um, the thing about the Volvo is this is a million kilometer or a half million mile or a million mile or a million no, and no, a no, half no, mile, no, million mile truck that you're going to replace your pickup three, four, five, six times in the life cycle of this truck. We're, we're going to talk about, I'm off topic, but I can do that. We're on wheels. We don't have a schedule uh, or a, not much of an agenda. Talking about the longevity of these trucks, I'll just mention that really quick. The warranty on the engine is traditionally to 500,000 miles. Mm -hmm. That really strikes a chord. What's the warranty on your pickup truck? A lot less. Mm -hmm. um, what's the warranty on the... Oh, we never mentioned warranty on the transmission. What's the... Out of the, the de door... The de facto standard warranty is five years, 750,000 miles, or for our Canadian friends, 1.2 million kilometers. That's the warranty on the transmission. Does that that kind of sets the tone about how long this thing is meant to last? Now remember, when you're coming in to build your new Volvo, warranty is a conversation in its own. We That's can custom video. build a package, and we're <clears throat> going to talk about that in another video. So make sure you figure out how many miles you want to put on a year, how long you want to keep the truck, and let's custom build that warranty package to tailor your needs. Okay. I was responsible for getting off topic. Back on topic. Back on topic. Our next video is going to be all about the chassis and the custom adaptations that we're going to make specifically for an RV hauler. Here comes chassis and adaptations. We're like a talk show. It's kind yeah, of, it's kind of we, good. We could like be... This could be an hour long. I should fly to Tennessee with you. We, we could should, go all day uh, with this. We, we could be like on the shopping channel. Yeah. Tell me, Jonathan. That... You're going to put this in the bloopers, aren't you? No, you haven't turned off the camera. <laughs> yeah, I know you haven't. <laughs>